everyone, and welcome to the EGP Expat Gamer Podcast. Not to be confused with the Egyptian Pound. I don't, I don't, I don't think many people will get confused by that. Uh, welcome to the first ever episode of the Expat Gamer Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Simon, otherwise known as The Domain on YouTube and many other social medias. And I'm joined today by Matt Porkmus Prime. Hello, 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 Expat Gamer. How's it going, my friend? It's going very well today. I'm currently stuck in a hotel room on Hong Kong quarantine because I traveled from the UK, so I gotta just sort of quarantine in a room for 14 days. But this is the last day, so I thought, why not have a monumental last day, record a nice podcast with my friend, and then I'm released into the wild. I can finally leave this room. I've been way too cooped up. I can't wait for you to get out of that hotel. It's, uh, it's going to be a big day, for sure. And today, you know, we're... Full disclaimer to begin with, we are not podcast experts. I've hosted nope. a couple before, and this is a brand new thing, but Expat Gamer is a social media phenomenon on WeChat that's blowing up right now. It's the perfect way to connect with expats all across China, and we thought we'd give you some just just something to listen to on your daily commute on your electric bike, you know? Whatever else you do to put bread on your table, you know, we're here for you. We're going to be talking about all things gaming across the world, and also what it's like being a gamer in China, because I'll tell you one thing to start, it's not easy. I've been living in China since 2009, and let me tell you, I mean, it definitely... Nowadays, here in 2020, it has become a little bit easier mm. with uh, special tools to allow you to play online easier. Uh, it's easier to get games. Yeah. Uh, but it's still it's still a little bit of a hassle to fully, you know, immerse yourself into the gamer universe. Right. Exactly. And really, uh, what we're trying to do with Expat Gamer is make the connection of gamers much easier around China. When we launch our website, you'll be able to log in and find gamers in your specific city, and it'll just make things a whole lot easier. I, I, I had a lot of lonely nights in China where I just couldn't connect with gamers around me. I just didn't know who played games. And Matt, you, you've pretty much seen this evolve for over 10 years, right? Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, I gotta say, I'm super excited about Expat Gamer and what we're trying to do, you know, to help out the Expat gaming community get together and uh, do some gaming, you exactly. know? Exactly. So, you, you know, make sure to look us up on WeChat. Uh, like Simon said, we're going to have a website soon. We have multiple subgroups on WeChat for, mm. you know, consoles, battle royale, MOBA, whatever your need is, we got it covered. Whatever you need, we got you. Yeah, we'll we'll take care of your gaming needs. And today we're talking about probably the largest topic possible in gaming. It's a perfect way to start off this podcast. We're going to be talking about the console wars. The 8th generation who maybe won, who came out on top, who is honestly like things like the Nintendo Switch, they've not even been in the running for that long, but they're already selling way more units than the Xbox One. So we're going to talk 8th generation, and then we're going to predict the 9th generation, give our opinions, and a little forward note, I am a lifetime Xbox fan, and a huge Halo nerd. And Matt has been a PlayStation nut pretty much your entire life, right? Uh, PlayStation and Nintendo. Gotta yeah, give some course, love to Nindy. Of course. Well, I mean, we we may disagree on our Xbox and our PlayStation, but we are brought together through Nintendo. Of course, of course. So, let's get into it, Mr. Simon. Are you ready? Absolutely, I am ready. Alright, so, in your opinion, who won the 8th generation? <sighs> I mean, if it was that easy, there wouldn't be a billion articles online about it, right? Um, <laughs> if we're talking pure sales, there is no competition. PlayStation steamrolled this whole event. I would defend Xbox. First of all, Xbox stumbled out of the gate. They didn't really have a chance from the moment they stepped foot on the E3 2013 stage. They just, they announced the wrong price point, they announced a mandatory Kinect shipped with all consoles, 
and they advertised as Xbox One. I mean, it's in the name One Home Entertainment System. They wanted the Xbox One to be the only thing that you had in your living room, even like you wouldn't even have a DVD player or a TV box. You would just have the Xbox One. And they, there's a, a meme online I love to quote. There's a guy who literally in the E3 2013 presentation, he quoted the word TV like 80 times, like way more than games. It was insane. And people just booed when they announced the price point of like $500, $499. Everybody will remember the iconic moment at the PlayStation conference that year where the guy literally just walked onto the stage, said the price, and the fans went wild. Because like $100 less for the PlayStation 4 on release is is pretty wild. Oh, yeah. And just to give the, our listeners a uh, an idea, so total sales for PlayStation 4 as of July 2020 are over 112 million units. Ugh. Your Xbox One, Simon, is currently at 48 million, 48,310,450 units Ooh, sold. Buddy. Now... When we're talking about the Switch, which came out a few years after both PS4 and Xbox, yeah. Switch is already up to over 62 million units, which is just insane. It is insane, and it's it's not even been that long. Is, is it four and a half years, five years now? And I think it's yeah, somewhere around there. Well, we also had this discussion earlier. The Switch is technically the ninth generation. Has, has the Switch already sort of won because the Wii that, U was we, the 8th. We, we need to figure out. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, technically, if you look up 8th generation, it's list PS4, Xbox One, and Wii U. Yeah, and the Wii U launched about a year before the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 to not much success. If we were talking about, well, if we were definitely talking about who won the 8th generation and you were saying that the Wii U is 8th generation, then definitely the Wii U lost. <laughs> but... I think oh, yeah. it's fair to say that we count the Switch as the main competitor for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, considering the Wii U has been discontinued for so long. If we're saying Switch, I mean, so so here's the thing. If I was the CEO of Nintendo and I was sitting in Mario's castle, I would feel like I'd won the 8th generation. Because the thing with the Switch is, almost every single game is an exclusive, and your fan base just just adores you. And in, in only four and a half years to have already outsold the Xbox One, I would kind of feel like I'd won. Yeah, and but not only that, but Switch uh, has been gaining year by year more and more third-party support. Yeah. More and more game uh, developers are wanting, not only wanting to, but are being able to port their games onto the Switch. The biggest... Uh, port that I can think of that was a shock, and a, for, especially for how well it runs on the Switch, yeah. is uh, Witcher 3. I thought you would say you know, Witcher, yeah. The Witcher 3 runs phenomenally on the on the Switch, and it's a gigantic game. Mm. Nobody thought, you know, that the Witcher would ever be able to, A, come to the Switch, or, you know, run as well as it does. So, I mean, third-party support is definitely coming, but like you said, I mean, Switch just, Nintendo just knocks it out of the park with their yeah. first-party titles. Yeah. I mean, they're always consistently, you know, people complain, oh, it's always Mario is the same thing over and over again, but is it? I mean, you have the different types of Mario games. You have your 2D Mario games, mm. your 3D Mario mm. games, and then your offshoots, like the sport titles, uh, the RPG titles. Yeah. Hell, you know, they, they teamed up and did a RTS game uh, with uh, Mario and the Rabbits, which blew people yeah, away and yeah. is one of the best uh, games on the switch yeah absolutely and uh, yes when you're talking about a mascot you can't compare say mario odyssey with like super paper mario like they're right. two very very different games just because they have the same face does not mean they're the same game um exactly so i don't know just going back to my my original argument about the xbox one for a second I think the main problem was that the Xbox lead at the time, Jason Holtman, he just, he got starstruck by the Wii. And mm -hmm. like, when the Wii came out, the UK especially, 
you could not get a Wii on that Christmas. I don't know what year it was, but that holiday, and even the next holiday, you could barely get a Wii. My dad would go to like 10 stores every single day after work and desperately try and search for one. Um, it was just selling so well and people were so on board with motion control. But here's the thing, the Wii was a motion control console and nobody ever argued that. You can't then say that the Xbox One is a motion-controlled motion hardware, because it's not. I mean... Just real quick to give you an idea, mm. uh, the Wii came out November 2013. Yeah. And the Wii's lifetime sales were 101.63 million units. That's fantastic. That's really good sales. Especially for, like, it's, it's only... A family console that you play Wii Sports on, you know, it's not. Oh, yeah. It's not like a flagship. It, I know it probably had a, a a very good catalog of games, but a lot of people bought it as just a family console, and that's what Xbox tried to do eventually. Now they released the Connect for Xbox 360, and it says here that they sold eight million units in the first 60 days. So that's amazing. And then yeah. it got the Guinness World Record of the fastest selling consumer electronics device and then 10 million had been sold by March of 20, uh, 2011. Now, that amounts to about 20% of the Xbox 360 users that actually had a Kinect, but that's only 20%. Like, clearly, 80% right. of those people had chosen not to have a Kinect, either because they had a Wii and they were happy with that, or they just, they were a gamer. They didn't want to be bothering with motion controls. I don't know if you ever tried to play Call of Duty with m motion controls, there's anything in the world I would rather do. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, no, for sure. But I mean, like, the Wii had a great, great catalog of games. I oh, mean, yeah. You had Zelda Twilight Princess, Mario Kart uh, 7, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, I remember working at uh, GameStop in America that yeah. weekend because the Wii and the PlayStation 3 came out at the same weekend. It was yeah. only like a two days apart. And dude, the Wii just smashed that oh, holiday yeah. season. I Everybody wanted a Wii and not a PlayStation or an Xbox. I bet I they mean, did. It was just insane. Yeah, I mean, it was completely new technology. And, I mean, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Smash Bros. Yep. Brawl, like Super Paper Mario, Mario Party 9, Animal Crossing, like Donkey Kong Country Returns. Yeah, there's so many games. I'm scrolling through them now, I'm getting nostalgic. Um, yeah. So, obviously, Xbox saw that and they wanted a piece of the pie, but then when they announced that the Xbox One would only ship with the Kinect, people were just not happy with that at all. And yep. for, especially for a hundred more dollars, like, I don't want to be forced into something. It's like, uh, I want to buy a new MacBook Pro at the minute. And all of the new MacBook Pros, they only ship with the touch sensor bar on the front of the screen. I don't want to pay basically another hundred, two hundred dollars to have this touch sensor bar, but they won't ship it without it. Yeah. So I'm just not going to buy the new MacBook. I, yeah, definitely. But I think uh, I, the, the points that you brought up definitely hurt Xbox, but I think one of the biggest ones which they were smart to change was the online DRM stuff, where like your your Xbox One would have to be online. Oh, yeah. I, I, like, 24 hours and if it was not online after 24 hours you couldn't play any of your games insane. and stuff like that insane and yeah, they, that, they that had no big, that was a big deal breaker that i think pushed a lot of people over to the playstation side like guys they announced that you couldn't own secondhand games for the xbox one oh yeah 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 like, i forgot about that yep madness absolute madness like there was it was such a poor marketing decision there were so many poor decisions made and basically like six months later phil spencer replaced um who was the other guy i don't even remember his name jason holtman i don't even know who that is phil spencer our god the, the like the god and savior of xbox replaced that guy um in 2014 after the conference and he has ushered in what i would believe as a new wave of of xbox partnership with gamers like i yep. truly believe that the new course that xbox is on is so much more gamer friendly and it's it, it it they know their they know their aim they've got a clear ambition 
Um, did you see like they they've been putting so much money into developing these uh, disability awareness controllers that yes, are for, yes. for people that basically don't have the right limbs to play and that they're, they're, they're investing a huge amount of money with almost no return really on these user-friendly devices they've just announced their full new wave of mobile accessible devices and they also have the game pass and the game pass ultimate that comes with xbox live and the catalog for game pass ultimate is ridiculous like all the new games halo infinite included i mean god bless halo infinite it's not even coming out this year now but <laughs> all of the new games launch with the game pass like right. xbox clearly just they're they're moving and this is probably what we're going to go into next that xbox is moving completely away from physical games like purchasing games to own on the xbox and more selling game passes because like I mean, Netflix can show you more than anything else in the entire world that consumers want unlimited choice. They don't want to just exactly. choose one movie. They don't want to choose, just choose one game. All right, well, before we get too far down that rabbit hole, yeah. let's save that for our who's going to win the ninth generation topic oh, yeah. uh, at, the, at the end of the show. Let's go into, like, what... What, what happened during this eighth generation with games itself? Let's mm. talk exclusives. Mm. Okay, let's do it. All right, so I did a rough little look up. There are many ways to tally exclusives for consoles. You have to remember that some exclusives are digital only through the specific stores like the eShop or the yeah, PSN sure. store. Yeah. Uh, so right now we have for PS4, 55 games, Xbox, 26, but that number would double if all of their exclusives were not only uh, available also on PC. Right. Switch, however, is just like out of the box crazy up to like 98. But I want the, our uh, listeners to re remember because they're going to go 98, 100. That's crazy. A lot of these games are just straight Japan only releases and then now China is also starting to get exclusive mm. games for their country as well so we need to somehow figure that out as well so instead of like concentrating on numbers let's break down what games what exclusives were system sellers during the eighth generation I'll let you take the Xbox side Sure, Xbox One exclusives. Um, I mean, I will go straight for Halo. My, my, my love, my everything. Um, Halo has released a few titles on the Xbox One. Halo Five Guardians was the main one, and I, I could go into a huge debate about that one. But Halo <coughs> Five Guardians, Halo: The Master Chief Collection, and Halo Wars Two. Halo Wars Two, you know, it's uh, uh wait, is it RTS? <laughs> it's rts yeah halo wars 2 you know that's an rts well received by most people halo the master chief collection is just the godsend for halo fans you can play halo 1 2 3 4 odst and reach all on one game it was unplayable at launch and for the first year but they did constantly patch it up and it is now one of the best games i think ever made um and then we have things like i don't know sunset overdrive it is it's it's very old at this point, but it was a fantastic launch exclusive. And then Gears of War, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Ori and the Blind Forest, Forza Motorsport 7, Sea of Thieves. Um, there's some pretty strong titles. I have yeah. always believed that PlayStation dominates, absolutely dominates Xbox in terms of exclusives. Like, here's the thing, and I've said it many times before. I love the Xbox interface, and I would be more pro Xbox on that, but I've kind of said quite a few times before, if Xbox didn't own the rights to Halo, I probably would have transitioned to PlayStation for a lot of exclusives, or at least bought myself a PlayStation 4, and I probably still will one day to play some of these exclusives. I would love to play Death Stranding, Spider-Man, Ratchet & Clank, like, a lot of these games I would love to play. Um, oh, Xbox wait, wait, One wait. had Titan Death, Death Stranding is not is is it exclusive is it not i think it is it's not on xbox well it's on pc oh right yeah because because well okay so pc is a whole different beast right i mean yeah, pc yeah, yeah. has like almost all xbox games now and xbox games pass is for pc 
all Halo games are now playable on on PC. Maybe not Halo 5 Guardians, but like even Halo Infinite will launch on Steam as well. So basically, Xbox One has some exclusives. Um, they have their flagship titles that they've really had for many, many years. But some of the games, they just like, they fell so flat. Um, Crackdown 3, I mean, that was like five, six years in development and it came out completely half-baked. The graphics of Crackdown 2 are better than 3. Um, so, PlayStation, you know, I, well, I'll hand it over to you, Matt. Blow me away with all the PlayStation exclusives. I know there's just way too many to count. All right, all right. Let's let's just go down a quick little list that I typed up. Hold on, fireworks. Fireworks. Can you hear it? Yeah, that sounds like they're in your building. G give me a second. Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, that's a firework <laughs> over. Jeez, I don't think all many right. podcasts have been interrupted <laughs> like that before. Are we ready? Well, I'm ready. Okay, so, PlayStation exclusives. Here's a little rundown of some of the top exclusives for PlayStation 4. Yeah. Let's do it. The Last of Us 2, God of War, Spider-Man, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Uncharted 4, Bloodborne, Dreams, Shadow of Colossus, Horizon Zero Dawn, which technically is now on PC, yeah. Persona 5, Ghost of Tsushima, Uncharted The Lost Legacy, Ratchet & Clank, the Last Guardian, Days Gone, Gran Turismo Sport, Until Dawn, and quite a few others as well. Yeah. I mean, PlayStation just knocked it out of the park for they this generation. Really did. Of they really in did. In my opinion, yeah. I mean, Bloodborne. Bloodborne is far and beyond what a lot of people call the best game of the generation. I mean, it's one of the best games I've ever personally played. Um, I mean, it just is a 10-10 game. Mm -hmm. But then you have Ghost of Tsushima, which just came out last month and has just been killing it in sales. Yeah. It's actually like selling more in Japan, which is the game was made by a Western developer. Was it? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, it's not a Japanese developed game. It was made by um, Sucker Punch, the ones who did uh, the infamous games. Oh, sure. Yeah. So, but then, you know, of course you have mr naughty dog he's gonna bring his head in and he you know they're in charge of the uncharted games and last of us and i mean the last of us 2 is the fastest selling playstation exclusive it yeah. sold like five million copies in like three days or something like that it was some ridiculous number that's not uh quite so uh praised but yes well it's it's controversial it's controversial yeah, yeah I'll call it i that. mean yeah. it's praised for its gameplay the graphics now, when you get into, like, story, that's where you kind of, you know, get a very divisive uh, side to Piss each people off, yeah. Um, right. Well, Matt, I'm seeing uh, an exclusive for PlayStation 4 that you didn't even mention, which um, is, in my opinion, probably the strongest of the lineup. Um, Frozen Snowball Free Fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, snow Frozen Free Fall Snowball Fight. Wow. It's, uh, I it's, have that game. It's, it's bejeweled. Game. <laughs> it's bejeweled with Frozen. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I used to play it with uh, with uh, my girl private students. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, trying to find something interesting for them to do after they have their class, maybe the last 10 minutes, and let them play a little Frozen. Oh, for and sure, that, yeah. that was fun. That's a good um, excuse to have the game. That's what you can tell the wife if she sees it. Sure, 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 <laughs> you know. I, I, I like Frozen. I'm not afraid to admit it. No, we all like let Frozen. It go. Let we it go, like bud. Frozen. Let it go. <laughs> we're either, we either like Frozen or we're insecure. That's, that's how it stands. All so, right. I, I, I mean, honestly, I mean, I, I don't think there's any question as to... No, no, there's which, no question Between PS4 and Xbox no when it comes to exclusives. No. Now... If you bring in the Switch... Uh, yeah, but the Switch... The, the thing with the Switch is those games... IPs have been owned by Nintendo forever. Like, yeah. I don't know how much I like. I don't. I don't know how many props I can give to like Zelda, Mario, Pokemon because they've never been anywhere else. Like yeah. all of these titles, like The Last of Us, they they could move to Xbox if the money was right or if the marketing was right. But they choose to be on PlayStation either because PlayStation bought them outright or they they choose PlayStation as the better console for their exclusive. So I think that 
Nintendo, yeah, they, they can obviously have props because their, their library is just enormous. But right. I think the real battle is between PlayStation and Xbox. And Exactly. But Switch is actually starting to get into new IPs. I mean, they had Astral Chain from Platinum Games, mm. which uh, did very well. I have it. I played it. I thought it was great. It was a lot different than previous pl Platinum Games. Yeah. But then they also got in with Marvel. They got the Ultimate Alliance 3 exclusive. That's very true. That's very true. Which... The uh, Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2 were both available on Xbox and PlayStation systems before, yeah. but 3 is only on Switch. Yeah. And they uh, don't get me wrong, they, they continue to innovate. Like, Splatoon is very renowned as being a popular game. They've got Ring Fit Adventure, which I think people really enjoy. Um, oh, dude. Especially for, with COVID and stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. That Ring Fit was like... Perfect People timing. Were just losing yeah. their minds over it. But also, they have, you know, they bought the rights and are fully funding uh, the new Bayonetta, Bayonetta 3. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then they've also got Arms. That's, uh, that's a popular game. Um, yep. They, and then, yeah, they, they've, they've slowly, like, they've, <laughs> they've slowly stolen Xbox's games as well, you know. They now have Cuphead, they've now got Hollow Knight. Um, they, they've ported it, they, they're even, what, what impresses me about Nintendo as well is they're now porting over, like, intense games, like Skyrim and Diablo 3, you know, yeah. they're not just sticking to one genre, uh, Mortal Kombat, like, they've got Crash Mortal Bandicoot, Kombat. they've got, yeah. um, yeah, they've got a lot of games, um, and well, then you can also... comes back to what I was saying earlier, they're getting more and more third-party support because yeah. you... Any developer can just look at the sales for the Switch and are going to be like, "Shit, I gotta get." I gotta get me there. that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, absolutely. And their their lineup is just an absolute beast right now. I mean, I, I know one of the main arguments when the Switch came out was that just wasn't enough games to buy it. I certainly mm -hmm. felt that at first. I didn't bother buying it until the new Pokemon came out. Turns out that was one of the worst games I've ever played. But, <laughs> um, but even things like like people are now playing Fortnite and Apex Legends on there and Doom yep. Eternal's on there. Like a lot of games, it is a very impressive library. And clearly, well, the, the and then you you got the monster Zelda Breath of the Wild two is. We'll yeah. see, but you know, rumored for next year. Which if that happens, no, no. <laughs> Bro, I I have count I I have clocked over like 150 hours on Breath of the Wild, probably a lot more now. Same, and same. bro, I've only done one of the Divine Beasts. <laughs> only one, and I'm like I'm just mesmerized by it still. And I always say to my girlfriend, I'm like I'm not in a rush because Breath of the Wild 2. Like I want to finish Breath of the Wild on the day that Breath of the Wild 2 comes out. You know, like I'll just make the perfect transition. Um, over over across, um, and maybe maybe that's it's it's a good um, direction to take our discussion into uh, the third gener the ninth generation of consoles, um, because yeah. the thing about the Switch and the thing that I will argue is Microsoft's strongest point to win the ninth generation is the Switch is portable and playable at home. And that's right. really what I just adore about it. I can hook it up to my TV, play a load of games, then I can take it on. Like, I bought a Switch. I wasn't going to buy one at first. I know there was a new Pokemon, but I bought the Switch primarily because I had an hour-long commute on the underground in Hong Kong, the MTR. And it was so tiring and I had nothing to do that I bought a Switch to play on that commute. And exactly. the the freedom of playing on the TV in the morning, I pull it out, put it in my bag, and then I'm playing it on the MTR. Don't even, like, I'm just pausing the game. And the, the freedom there is immense. And I think yep. Xbox is, <laughs> maybe Xbox, like the Xbox One, that like the Xbox One was trying to steal the limelight of the Wii, maybe the Xbox Game Pass is now trying to steal the limelight of the Nintendo Switch. Because that freedom to play the Xbox Games Pass simultaneously on your main console, on a mobile device, or on Steam is huge. Absolutely huge. Oh, yeah. 
And just another real thing about, real quick thing about the Switch, especially in China. If you're an expat in China, the Switch is one of the best things oh, yeah. that you can buy because, like what Simon was saying, you know, as a teacher, if you're a teacher, or you know, even whatever your job is, you know, you're gonna have to have some commute and riding like the subway, bus, or however you get to work.、Mm. You know, it's a great way to kill some time, relax, especially after a hard day of work. But the other thing is, is the Switch is great because, you, like, the portability. I take my Switch. I used to take it to work, play with my coworkers during breaks,、yeah. or take it to like the bar. And you know, the the box that you need to plug it into like a TV is so small it can fit in a little carrying case、exactly. as well. You can just take it to the bar, hook it up, and you have Mario Kart or Smash Brothers at the bar, drink、yeah. a few beers with your friends. But also, if you're friends with, if you have a lot of Chinese friends, more than likely one of them is gonna have a Switch. The Switch is ridiculously popular among the Chinese.、Mm -hmm. I can see parents playing the Switch while eating, you know, and ignoring their kids while the <laughs> kids just play on the phones and stuff. <laughs> yeah,、um, it is. It is just so versatile. I mean, I used to play Overcooked on my Switch. With the receptionist at my school at lunchtime, you know, like it's so versatile and it's so easy to understand, so user friendly. You can connect so many devices to it, and then like I'll dock off those controllers, I, I'll dock off the Joy Cons, I'll snap them into the main controller, and it's like I'm playing Xbox. Like it's so versatile, and that's where, to be honest, like, okay, here's 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 about ninth generation, like. We've got a the same way we were debating whether the Wii U and the or the Switch is eighth or ninth generation. We've got to debate what classifies as sales figures for the ninth generation because the way that Xbox Series X is being marketed is the Xbox Game Pass is the king. If you subscribe to the Xbox Game Pass, you can have all of your games on Xbox, PC, or mobile. It's up to you, especially. Like with all the devices that Xbox just announced, you know we've got the Power A controller, which is literally you can just dock your phone into it, and it also has custom button mapping. You know you've got the Razer Kishi, which is like basically a Switch, and then you've also got the、um, you've you've got a couple of other like spin-off controllers as well, and it's just so mobile user friendly. So. Xbox is saying, you know, get the Game Pass first and foremost, and then play how you want. We'll、right. be here with the most powerful console if you want to play these games in the best way. You can play them on your mobile, and you can play them on your PC, and that's completely fine. If you want to buy the best console on the market, because the Xbox is the best hardware on the market. If you want that, then you can come to us. But if they're marketing it like that, I don't know if Xbox Series X is going to come out on top with sales. Well, and then the other thing that you got to remember is that XCloud is not going to launch on iOS、mm. app on any Apple device. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's another big factor.、Um, and like iOS, you know, they've been doing their own thing with their、um, what's it called, like Apple Games or something. But、yep. they're low quality games. They're not. Oh yeah. It's not、sure. like playing Gears of War on your phone. I mean, it's just like Snake and Tetris. I mean, it's more complicated than that, but it's not much. So my feeling is, is I agree with what you said. I think Xbox is definitely going to be concentrating more and more on Game Pass. But、yeah. the other thing people need to remember is. Games don't last forever on Game Pass, and it's the same thing with the PlayStation One, PS Now. Games get taken off of these services. You know, you, you have a limited window for like some of the bigger games to play.、Uh, so always remember, if you want to play a game, if you see it on there, you better play it before it gets taken off.、Mm, that's true. And、uh, my girlfriend actually just made a really good point in the background.、Um, We've got to see how this develops with Apple being blocked, or at least like some of the game store or the app store being blocked in China, because、yeah. if that goes through and Apple loses the slice of the pie in China, then that might mean big things as well. And if Xbox is launching all of their games on Android, Android might just be the new place to play in China.、Um, so we'll have to monitor that closely as well. Well, and then the other thing with the whole streaming thing, and we should, you know, bring in Google Stadia as well, because I'm guessing 
you know, Google Stadia, I guess we can include in ninth generation as well. Yeah, sure. Is internet. I mean, yeah. China is not built for streaming. Oh, it's no. Just not. No. And neither is America, per se, or really no. any country no. at this moment. No. I mean, it, the Google Stadia has failed so badly because, you know, you have to have, like, top of top the line tier internet. internet yeah i was barely even going to bring up stadia because like i think i think stadia is like the way that it was marketed and basically the way that google seemed to just drop it immediately like it's an embarrassment and when stadia was announced any tech guy was on YouTube telling everyone that there's no way that the average Wi-Fi or the average internet user can actually support these games. So, I mean, that's that's also a thing. It, de it depends how quickly 5G develops. It certainly won't yeah. develop very, very fast if most of Europe is burning the 5G towers down, but... <laughs> Like, if 5G can develop fast enough, then maybe Google Stadia can catch up. But I, I don't see Stadia in the in the long running right now. Um, certainly not for the next two or three years, because I just like you said, I just don't think the technology's there for fast enough internet. Certainly not in China. China's probably going to be the kings of 5G eventually. But when it comes to PlayStation sales, I think that... Like, I think that PlayStation's quite solidified as, uh, you know, the home console brand now. And I don't know, do, do you think sales will slow down or increase, or more or less just stay the same? Will people just continue to buy PlayStations, but now they'll buy the PS5 instead of the PS4? I think PS5 is going to just dominate again. Mm. I think, think that they have really built in a good uh, relationship with the customers. They're, you know, doing... And uh, this is a beside the point, but they're doing more console exclusivity with stuff like uh, Spider-Man coming to the Avengers game yeah. only on PS4, PS5. And, you know, the, real quick, you know, so many people are upset about this, but this isn't something new. This isn't something that just happened for the first no. time. Console exclusivity has been around for ages, okay? Mm -hmm. Microsoft used to do it a lot with, like, the 360 and oh, yeah, yeah. I, you know, there's just no reason to get all upset about it because no. it's good for business, it's good for consumers, and it's how people are drawn into Xbox. Okay, and I mean, I, I have, I, I have Switch. some thoughts on that. I mean, like, I, I agree that like, I was never mad that Spider-Man was being developed for PlayStation. Like, God, I wanted to play it, and I still do. Same with God of War, Ratchet and Clank, but. They were games developed exclusively for PlayStation, and like I, I can't knock that. They've made a, they've made a separate marketing decision there. What I do not like is when a game ships on two consoles, but there's exclusive content on one of them. I think it's just, I think it's very disrespectful to the fan base or to consumers in general. Now. I don't necessarily, like, Spider-Man is coming exclusively to the new Avengers game. I understand that Sony owns the rights to Spider-Man. So I do right. not like when the new Call of Duty game came out, the new Modern Warfare, and there were exclusive game types to PlayStation for a year. I think that's very greedy, and I think yeah, it's very disrespectful to consumers who, like, a kid has no choice if their parent buys them a PlayStation or an Xbox, and then just because all of their friends can play a game mode that they can't, I just think it, it rubs me up the wrong way. Um, yeah. But in terms of exclusives that are coming to PlayStation versus Xbox right now, I mean, good lord, I, like, everybody's reception of the new trailers for, like, new games in both PS5 and Xbox Series X are quite mixed, but right. people adore the new Ratchet and Clank. And, like, I think that Ratchet and Clank game is probably one of the best representations of, like, next generation hardware. It looks oh, insane. Sure. It looks yeah, insane. Sure. Yeah. You gotta bring up the fact that Phil Spencer has said there aren't really any exclusives for Xbox One within the first two years. Yeah. I mean, Halo was gonna be the big one, and, like uh... it's been said, has been delayed till 2021, it's which, honestly, is, is a smart thing by Smart far decision. the smartest thing to do yeah that that because, game was not finished <laughs> real quick just to say something about ps5 
they they got some big games coming out for PS5. You got the new Spider-Man, Miles Morale, yeah. and then obviously Spider-Man 2, the full sequel, will yeah. be coming out as well. Demon Souls is being remade for, by Blue Point, and this is a game that PS4 people were, have been dying to get their hands on for years and have yeah. been begging Sony to remake it. Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two is going to be on PS5, and that's going to be a huge thing for mm. us. My, my problem with Xbox is they always focus on just a couple certain genres. Yeah. Uh, first-person shooters and maybe sports and stuff oh, like I that. Oh, I know that. Like I know that feeling. Yeah, I know that. While feeling. PlayStation gives you a wide variety of yeah. everything. I mean, we're, we 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 get a new Fable game. I'm excited about that. I'm hoping that the Series X comes out with a new Titanfall. There's nothing announced, but like, I absolutely adore Titanfall one and two. <laughs> we're getting another. We're getting another Forza Motorsports. <laughs> Yeah, you get another Forza, I another don't. Halo. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be Gears of War six. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Gears of War five, pretty, pretty, pretty well loved. And we also, you know, we do have Cyberpunk, um, but Cyberpunk's exclusive, right? No, Cyberpunk uh, is on, ev- uh, on everything. I thought it was. Yeah. Oh man. No, 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 no. Oh man. Well, you know, we've we've got we, we've got Halo. As long as we've got Halo, I'm not going anywhere. There's a lot of debates of like Halo. The reason that Halo wasn't quite up to scratch in that demo was because they've been developing a game that's compatible with Xbox One for six years, when they yeah. really should have just been making something for Series X. We're reaching the 45 minute mark, and I'm not quite sure how much. I mean, if you're still here and you're still listening, thank you so much. Um, I hope you stick around. One a week. Uh, I'm not quite sure when they'll come out, but I, I should have this out by the weekend. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm juggling a lot of things. I've got a lot of eggs in my basket. But I've certainly enjoyed debating the console war here, Matt. I think, you know, the main two questions, who won the eighth generation? I think it's fair to say PlayStation. Um, yeah. But also Switch... I- hasn't I been say Switch in, as well. Yeah, Switch has only been in the running for like half the time and already outdone Xbox. So like you could make the argument that Switch w- won as well, especially for like the future. And then if we're talking about who's going to win Generation 9, I guess the Switch already has 50 million sales, so maybe they're already ahead. But yeah. in terms of who's going to win Generation 9, I do not think that Xbox Series X is going to outsell PlayStation 5. Absolutely not. But I think that the Xbox Game Pass is going to bring in a lot of mobile users that might eventually invest in an Xbox Series X. And that just depends on how well a phone can actually run these games, which I think is still debatable. Right. Well, and it's, it, I think besides sales, it's just going to really come down to games. And yeah. right now, Xbox just doesn't have anything doesn't have the bringing games. in new consumers for no. the ninth generation. No, it does not have the games. And... PlayStation, you know, I I will probably, I don't know what I'll do about it, it depends how much it is, but like, I would probably buy a PlayStation 5 just for that new Ratchet and Clank game. Me and Simon had this conversation the other night about what the future holds. What about the 10th generation? Sony is like, hey guys, start getting ready. Yeah. PS6, 10th generation. We're going full digital. Bro. Oh yeah, I, I think full digital is, is, is a no-brainer. Like, there's, oh, yeah. there's no way we'll be buying and selling discs in, in even a few years' time. The new Halo Infinite is being marketed as a 10-year-long game. They say that you'll be able to play Halo Infinite and there'll be DLC for it and, like, new additions to it for maybe, like, 10 years. And I could right, easily right. see the Xbox Series X, they're investing in it being the most powerful console ever. Maybe they're investing in it to be the console that they just support for the next 10 years. Because I don't really know the ins and outs of the tech of why Xbox Series X is the most powerful, but I think that it's going to be able to handle whatever games are put its way for a long, long time into the future. It's not like a a numbered thing, it's the Xbox Series X. I think it will just be released as the console with the best hardware to play your Xbox Game Pass games, and I think that might be the model for a long, long time to come. Yeah, well, Matt, I mean, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Well, I was joining you, you were joining me. We're co-hosts on the very first episode of EGP. I didn't want to try and steal the limelight. 
Um, EGP, yes, the Xbox Gamer we are Podcast. Co-hosts. This is a two-person job. We absolutely <laughs> are. I think you brought way more research than I did today. Thank you to anybody that's tuned in today, and definitely if you've made it to the end. I hope we have kept you company in whatever crazy and wild thing you're doing in China today. You know, anybody that lives in the heart of China, you're already far braver than most people in the world. And yeah. please let us know in the comments below... If you enjoyed this podcast, if you would like to maybe hear another podcast on our predictions for the future, I I think we could talk a lot more about the 10th generation. And any comments that you leave below, if you suggest what you would like us to research and talk about, we would be more than happy to. This has been Simon and Matt. I'm The Domain on social media. I got a YouTube channel. I make a lot of Halo content. Matt is Porkymus Prime. You can add him on, what is it, Switch and PlayStation? Make sure to check out all of my articles on Expat Gamer on our official account. Just search for Expat Gamer on the search thing in uh, WeChat and look forward to seeing you guys again in the future. Expat Gamer, we're both, and we're really excited to launch our website soon where you'll be able to find specifically people in your city playing the games that you love. Thank you very much for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>